Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Let's talk about the law uh, in light of this uh, kidnapping. We've seen different states. They've come up with this law wherein if you're a kidnapper, if uh, your victim dies in your custody, that's the... Or uh, 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 in the process of um, kidnapping someone. Yeah. Or if the person comes out alive, you get a life sentence. And different states are trying to see what they can do uh, to see that they just nip this, but the case is still coming up, still increasing, as it were. Do you, from your perspective, think that these laws are having any impact whatsoever? The, the, the problem is not the law. The problem is how we actually manage our criminal justice system. And it has three components. Law enforcement, the courts, and the law enforcement is, includes all the agencies, investigators and the rest. The court, which includes the, the judge, the prosecutor, defense lawyers and the rest. And uh, the prison uh, system, which includes the prison officers and uh, the prison environment itself. We have a very serious problem in this country. Until those three areas are taken good care of. And also, the people that are also supervising these three components, which is the executive, as in the, either the governor or the president, it's not enough for you to make a law. You must have that political will to actually implement that law. Now, you said um, death penalty for. How many governors have signed death uh, uh, warrants mm -hmm. for execution? The only one that did it in recent, at least since I've grown up, and at least I, I knew in the days of the military, but since our political dispensation was um, uh, Governor Shomali. And after that, he didn't sign any of this. Now, what you, the, the message you are you know, sending back to, to this criminal is, don't worry. We just made that law. We cannot implement it. Now, let's go back to the justice system. If the law enforcement uh, agency uh, sits and do their job properly, what I mean their job properly is protection of people and assets and also investigate. Then take prosecution away from the Nigerian police. Police are saddled with too much. What and do you we see give you to set up a what, DPP? The Ministry of Justice. Take it back to the Ministry of Justice. Make it like a KRA, a KPI for those officers. You fail in the court. It goes into your record. It affects your promotion. It affects your, 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 your career. You understand? So they, see, they want to make sure that everything they are taking to court... They've done their work very well. So let me tell you why, how, how it's, I mean, uh, it's been in the hands of the law enforcement. They are very good uh, prosecutors from the Nigerian police. But a lot of, uh, many other ones that are messing up case. They are be the one that will tell you, say, when you get to court, don't plead uh, guilt, uh, guilty. Say you are not guilty. Even though they were caught red-handed doing this. Do you know why? Because if you don't your plea, uh, guilt plea, you say you are not guilty. It means that you go into trial. And it gives you the opportunity to be able to apply for bail, if it's not a capital uh, off offense or, or, or an offense of uh, a particular... So building, yeah, yeah. That, that. So the moment, after a while, the, the, the lawyer will help one way or the other, talk to the judge or whatever for variation of bail condition until you're able to you know, meet the bail times and you go. And then they'll make sure that uh, the person, they frustrates the case. Are you suggesting Maybe, is there rackets going on in there? Mm -hmm. Oh, this is what is happening. It's, it's not about rackets. But it's, 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 it's not that they, 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 they sat and said this is how we're going to do it. You see, you see lawyers, defense lawyers and the prosecutors, you know, have not, I mean, you know, you know, you know, working together to ensure this. And then after a while, maybe the, the prosecutor won't come today or tomorrow they won't bring the, the, the suspect to court. Mm -hmm. And after a while, the court will strike it out for want of diligent uh, prosecution. Uh, prosecution. Mm -hmm. And then technically the, the case is out. And then uh, which, means, which means that they can still represent the case back to court because the case was not determined on its merit. It's a criminal issue. But they will not. There are many of such cases there. And then the person is on bail and is gone. Now you see them coming back. And they said this person was released from prison. He was released not because he served his term. Mm. It was released because the case was either struck out, you, you, you understand, China, or something yeah. happened. Let's, and then, let's, look at, let's look at security in Nigeria today. Do you get the perception that security is being thought about as fighting Boko Haram majorly? Or does the government see it as speculating down and making a statement from the federal level that kidnapping cannot be tolerated in this country? What impact will that bring? I think we've, we've not actually passed that message out yet. 
that kidnapping is not even though we've uh, we've been saying it but it, it has not reflected in our actions and uh it's the fastest growing industry you know somebody said is it uh, we should call it i say it's an industry because uh people going and look at evans now that house is a very beautiful house uh, and uh, it's, it's enough to motivate a whole lot of people that uh, if such a business can pay for one to live in a Magodo in such a mansion, I think a whole lot of people. Let me tell you, kidnapping is an all commerce affairs in Nigeria today. You've seen, I mean, ransom being paid even as low as 25,000 naira. And um, like I, I've said uh, before, it used to be Yahoo Yahoo that uh, was the menace, the way now kidnapping is going faster than Yahoo Yahoo. And if care is not taken, if case not taken, our problem now is not even corruption. Even it's also an aspect of corruption that is even foiling this. Our problem right now is insecurity. Insecurity and kidnapping is chief right now. People cannot, uh, I, I, I are not able to come out anymore. People are, are, are afraid. And I was trying to explain how we can solve kidnapping in this country. You see, I want to compare kidnapping and armed robbery now. Now, there's something we call theft triangle. And we can also use it to explain arm robbery. It's a triangle, and there are three components, the hedges of those triangles. We have the object, which is what to be uh, people attractive for want to steal. Then we have the motivation, what motivates you to want to steal. And then we have opportunities. These three must take place before a theft or a robbery can actually, must be there before it can take place. And when you want to control theft or you want to control robbery, what you take away is the opportunity. The opportunity is that you don't make it easy for anybody to steal. Opportunities that you can make, you know, build up a physical structure around the object to protect it. When the, when, when the opportunity is removed, people are less motivated to want to steal. You won't want to go into a vault to steal when you don't have anything to open it. Now, but it's different in kidnapping. It's the same triangle. Three, same three components that must be there for kidnapping to take place. But this time around, the object is not material, it's not money, it's human being. And the human being we are talking about here is 180 million plus people. So, opportunity, unlike robbery, you cannot remove opportunity. You cannot control opportunity here. Why? Because the opportunities are there. 180 million people will come out. You understand what I'm saying now? So, what you control to eliminate kidnapping is motivation. You make it less motivation. I mean, sorry, motivating for them because you cannot remove the opportunity you cannot build wall against one and eighty million people but, but the, uh, this one eighty million people are the youths and uh how all of you, us how including you, you and how, and uh, hold on how do you how do you how do you <laughs> rope they them baby. In? how they do you people are they is it possible you rope them in to be a uh, uh, security uh, personnel for instance uh, and then get them meaningfully employed as to the thinking of the government that agriculture perhaps is the best way to go no security is the best way to go we just said something i told you the the the, the largest possible opportunity of employment in nigeria today is security not agriculture three percent of americans are engaged in agriculture and they feed the whole nation we don't need i mean 75 percent of this country, uh, population to feed nigeria we only need about five to ten percent if we mechanize agriculture but security Security can take and reduce our unemployment by 45% if we do the right thing. Police are everywhere where they are not supposed to be. It is not like that in advanced country. There are certain functions that they are performing, security agencies are performing today, and they are collecting double money that corporate security agencies, uh, I mean, uh, uh, companies can actually carry that out. We're using government money to pay policemen that are protecting individual, individual businessmen, traders that are billionaire traders, that needs police protection. And yet these same people are still paying these police officers. No, they are supposed to engage private security companies that will employ our graduates that are trained and are already there will be licensed to be a hand. Mm. Right. You understand know now? To be employed and be paid good money. They will see security as a career. The way it has been seen, in America, in UK, an advanced country. Yeah, Let these policemen go back to the police station and actually do the work of law enforcement. Let me tell you, when you check the number of policemen that are protecting people in Nigeria today, it's not their fault because of what the law, law says right now. They are about about 45% of the police, uh, I mean, uh, employ, I mean, employee strengths. Mm -hmm. Let's take these people back into proper law enforcement. And let us employ these unemployed graduates. That's License, a I mean, I, I mean, says uh, security companies create the platform, mm. it's the structure, standardization that can be followed and license them 
to bear arms for executive promotion, uh, I mean, I mean, uh, protection and all this uh, gangsterism on the road with policemen with guns and siren planning vehicle pushing people around because they are protecting one mm -hmm. executive uh, person that is uh, that didn't leave his office on uh, time and want to catch up flight and is pushing every one of us off the road because he must catch up his flight. <laughs> it will stop. You know, we need stop to make it. a conscious effort now to so turn things around in this country. Let's talk at that point. Uh, mm -hmm. Shayi Aditya, uh, interesting perspectives there. Security experts, thank you for coming on today on the thank program. So We're back in a moment and still talking about security. Don't go away. <laughs>